Isaiah chapter 42, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the 42nd book of the Bible. Behold my servant, God speaking, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. I believe he said that a couple times. God from, from heaven spoke down, this is my beloved son, whom I, who I, have, who I delight. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Now the second advent judgment of the Gentiles, those that teach, that teach the nation's right of Israel, will be the sheep nations put off to the side for the millennium. And those nations that were against Israel, he's going to burn up and get rid of and destroy. And as far as the Gentiles in the church age, well, those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, their sins will be put under his blood, under the, the gospel. And those that reject Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're going to be put off into hell. He shall not cry. Now, the Bible says he wept. This cry is, you know, he's not going to call for, you know, lawyers and justice, you know, when he's standing before Pilate, you know, give me a lawyer. Nor lift up his, or nor, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Now, they heard him all over the place. They listened to him. And what this is, he's not a, he's not a revolutionary. He's not a righteous person. He's just a plain, common, ordinary Jew who is not raising a fuss. And if you didn't want him in, in your city, he left. If you didn't want to have anything to do with him, he left. Now, you wanted something, you wanted to hear him, he spoke to you. And he helped you. A bruised reed shall he not break. Well, a bruised reed is already half broken. Jesus Christ was meek and lowly. He wasn't weak. He was meek. And the smoky flag shall he not quench. Well, that's a you know that's a flag that's on fire. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Well, it says here he's going to judge the Gentiles, and he's going to have a true, right judgment. That is the second advent. First advent, he came for for uh, the, the the sacrificial lamb. Thus saith God the Lord. Verse four. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. He wept over Jerusalem. Got to be maybe the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ. Because he did cry. He did speak in the streets. When he comes the second time, he's coming with anger. And he's not going to bruise a reed, man. He's going to he's going to bruise the Christ rejectors, the ones that are against God. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth. Set judgment in the earth. That's the second advent. And the isles shall wait for his law. We talked about the isles in chapter forty-one. The nations. Thus saith God the Lord. He that created the heavens. No, no big bang. What is God the Lord over any and all gods? God the Lord, the Jehovah, is the one that created all. And if you hear some of these uh, funny, I mean, they're just too funny. Some of these religions and, and uh, gods worship. I mean, God, small g-o-d-s how the earth was created. I mean, there's even one, you know, where the earth is carried out on a turtle or something. It's foolish. And stretch them out. He that spare, spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, 
He that giveth breath unto the people upon it. Now that's Genesis chapter 2. But it says people. He's not talking about Adam. Every baby that is born in this world, when they clear the, the nasal cavities and get that first breath of air, according to Isaiah 42 verse 5, that breath is given by God even today, 2015. If that baby don't get that lung full of air, there is no life. Why people? How many babies are, are being born presently at this hour? And spirit to them that walk therein. Every man is a body. Every man is a soul. And every man is a spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. John 8, 12 and Genesis 1, 3. And will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. There's the Lord Jesus Christ. To open the blind eyes, which he did, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. When he died, the graves were opened up, and the Old Testament saints were walking about. He walked in Abraham's bosom and said, Hi, hey, I'm looking for not just the dying thief, I'm looking for all. And then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. And my glory will I not give to another, Mary. Popes, religious leaders, sports figures, actors, actresses, man alone, falling gods, neither my praise to graven images. He's always against those graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. The gospel, the epistles of Paul, the book of Revelation are all new things. The church will be a new thing when we're in Isaiah right now. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ will be a new thing. The New Testament will be a new thing. The Old Testament will be former. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. How do you like that? God will tell you before the new things happen. Prophecy. We have a God that's a God of prophecy 100%. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea. Seamen. Merchant marine. Navy men, sailors. God wants the seamen to praise him. He wants sailors to praise him. And all that is therein, the isle and the inhabitants thereof. The isle would be the, the coastal ports, the city ports. Where the ships would come in. The harbors. Let the wilderness, all right? Not just the sea coast, but the wilderness where there is no water. Where there is no life. Just barren land. And the cities thereof, cities, the sea, the wilderness, the cities, thereof lift up their voice. And the villages that Kedar does inhabit. So villages, cities, coastal areas, sea. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of mountains everywhere. North, east, south, west. In the sea, on top of the mountains, God wants praise. Revelation 4, that's what we were created for. Let them give glory unto the Lord. Not fallen gods, not graven images, not to people. 
and declare his praise in the island. Missionary work. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Sits upon a horse. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He's angry. He shall prevail against his enemies. Second Advent. I have long time holding my peace. Church age. I have been still today, 2015, and refrained myself. Long suffering, the Bible says. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. How quick will the second advent be? Be at once. I will make waste mountains and hills. As we already read, they're going to melt like wax. The mountains and the hills will be flat. Dry up all their herbs, and I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the, po the pools, and I will bring the blind by the a way that they know not. So I guess some of the people in Silver Peter, the Jews, are some of them are going to be blind. I will lead them in paths that are that. Yeah, that they have not known. Bring them through the king's highway. Like their fathers through Moses. I will make darkness light before them. There will be a light. God was a light unto them in the night with a fire. And the crooked things straight. That would be something new. I mean Moses didn't go before and make the crooked ways straight. They just walked the crooked ways. Now it's going to be new. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So if this is a second advent passage of the Lord Jesus Christ. It just said he's not going to forsake the Jews. So there are people out there that say he's going to. Listen, there are Baptists out there who proclaim that the Jews are done with, with God. God's all finished with them. And take that second Thessalonians and apply that to the Jew. Now he's going to be angry with them. He's going to chastise them. But. They're not done being his son. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. That trust in graven images. That's forbidden against a Jew. That they that say to the molten images, Ye are our God. Ye are our God. So what does a Jew read in America on a green piece of paper that has faces on it? In God we trust. You know it's forbidden for a Jew to hold American money. Yet we are a Christian nation and we engrave pictures of dead men on our money. We put a unclean bird the eagle on our money and I even think uh, I'm not sure about this one the what's it called the US savings bonds has men's pictures on them or an eagle at least they haven't changed it and the Jews if they want money in America they are worshiping graven image of a man you know what you know what American money is made of it's made from plates you know what those plates are they're graven they're made by engravers. Very great detail. Our money is against the Bible. Okay. Here, ye deaf. Oh, come on, God. And look, ye blind, that ye may see. Now, I don't think that's a physical. I don't think that's when Jesus came and he healed the deaf and he healed the blind. 
If it's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, I get... Now, I was told, and there's two there, I don't know. I was told somebody went over to Salem Peach and put a, at least New Testament Bible. Not the complete versions of the Bible. I'm not sure. But I know I know somebody went over there and put, put Bibles over there. But you know when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, do you think those Jews are going to understand what's happening? I don't think so. It may, may. They may be deaf to what's going on, blind what's going on, and here comes their Messiah and picks them up. Or if they are deaf and, and, and they are blind, then the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be healing all over again. Maybe that's how he proves the Jews, here I am. I mean, the Jews require a sign. Imagine a Jew sitting in, in, in Salem Peter and God has him reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which he doesn't believe. And he healed, he healed the eyes of the blind, and, and he's spitting this guy's eyeball. <laughs> Jesus spitting that guy's eye. Oh, man, I would have been so offended and all that. And, and he stuck the, his fingers in the guy's ears, and his ears were open. <laughs> oh, this, this book is so funny. And he imagine the Messiah coming up and calling a blind man, come here. Wow, this is a beautiful rock city. Don't know. But the Jews require a sign. That is how they were founded. Who is blind? But my servant? Or deaf? As my messenger? That I sent. That's interesting. Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Open the ears, but he heareth not. So this is understanding. It's not physical. You know the nation of Israel, especially the, the religious people, had no idea what you, But they had an idea. Whence we don't know whence this man cometh from. Yes, you do. You had a national census tax event which you had to record his family and his name being born in Bethlehem. You knew who he was. It is recorded in history. Don't tell me that in, in Nazareth, in the synagogue there, that that Levi, when he went to Jerusalem three times a year, he didn't call his other Levi preacher. I got this one kid in my class, man. He just knows everything. I give him the opportunity to speak with the other kids, get up there, and he just woos them. And he never does wrong. This one kid is perfect. I hate him. He's the worst kid in my class. Man, like he puts me, I mean, don't you, can't you just see this guy going to Jerusalem talking about Jesus? How about Jesus, 13 years old, he's sitting with him at the temple, his family's left him, he's sitting there and they're like, oh, what on earth? Where did you learn this stuff? And they had a night, 13 years old, he's sitting with those guys at the temple, he's putting them down by his knowledge of the scriptures, and you telling me that 20 years later, they don't remember this 13-year-old little brat that was, that knew everything? You tell me that he fulfilled 48 prophecies of the Old Testament 100% and they didn't recognize it and did not understand it? No, they were blinded. And Jesus said, you're blinded. The nation was blinded because they rejected him. And this is what they're going to be at Sailor Petra. They're going to be blinded. They're going to have the foggiest idea. Listen, they've been worshiping Satan as God until he unveils the, the curtain and shows that he's sitting in the most holy place. You know why they take off? Because that is sacrilegious to them. That is a violation of law. Nobody is supposed to be on that seat. 
Now they're running down the cell of Peter like, what on earth is going on in here? Well, if you find your Bibles and read the book of Revelation, maybe you go back to the How many times have we seen the reference in the second advent? We've seen the tribulation from Genesis to Isaiah. We haven't even finished the Old Testament. We haven't even finished the Bible. You go through this, all this stuff. When they actually have lived it. I'm not talking about something I'm saying that's going to happen later in the future. But I'm saying that they're, they're panting and they're, and they're scared and they're selling peach and they're reading something I say to he, he, Rabbi, you read this? This is going on right now in Jerusalem. Hey, the Rock City, isn't that like where we are right now? When the Bible prophecy for them becomes the daily newspaper. How about that? And the armies in the north shall come down. Uh, here comes a runner into Hey, guys, did you just hear the armies in the north are coming? To, what? Mama Mia be quoting Italian to say this Bible is... It's, you imagine him open up Matthew and him that's on the housetop, let him not run back when he sees the abomination of desolation run. De I was on the housetop. For some reason, I didn't want to grab my stuff. Pray that your flight not be in, in this in the on the Sabbath or winter. You imagine the long lines on Saturday because the airlines have closed down for Sabbath. They can't take off because it's oh, oh what you're doing. One day for the Jews, this Bible, unbelief, will be their daily newspaper. You won't need the Jerusalem Post or whatever the newspaper. You just open up your Bible and say, wow, it's living right now. How come the people in Israel didn't do that when Jesus was walking the streets? Did you see Jesus walk by today, Mama? No, I didn't see Jesus. He just... He didn't sparkle or anything. He didn't float above all the people. He was just a commonly unknown person that had no beauty. Where did I read that before? Where did I read something about the Messiah just having no beauty? I don't know. Grab me some plates and let's eat some dinner. When Jesus came the first advent, listen, the, the Bible was real. And wait till the second advent. Wait till the millennium. Wait till the tribulation period. To have them open up Daniel and Revelation. They think Moses turning the turning the waters into blood is is future. I mean, it's past history. We today read it in Je in Revelation, find out it's yet coming and it will be current events. You imagine somebody open up the Book of Revelation in the tribulation period. Wait a minute. There's some creatures coming on the earth, and they're going to sting me. I'm going to want to die, not die. Oh, hey. Scared of fire out of you. But they'll be unbelief. Because they're blind. A guy will read about those creatures coming on the earth, and he'll still be, wow. God, I hate you. They'll have no understanding of the word like they do today. We can take we can take the Bible and show somebody how to be saved and what their future can be. Listen, I'm a doctor. I can tell you what your diagnosis is. You've got sin, you're going to die. I can show you the cure. Right here, written down, black and white. And they're blinded. They're blinded. And they're deaf. They won't hear. You speak too loud. So you can hear me. Your music's too loud. So it's it's the condition of the people. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He will magnify the law. How will he magnify the law? Well, first, Jesus Christ obeyed the law 100%. That aggravated everybody. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Jesus. Where is your sin offering? I have a sin. Oh. Right, sure. You realize that every time he went to the temple, he didn't have to bring a sin offering. 
You know, Mary bought two turtle doves. Why? Because the lamb was in her arms. When she brought her purification. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and, and uh, name him. They didn't need to bring the lamb. He was right there. And the law will come back in the tribulation. The law will be in the millennium. Imagine the talk that was with Jesus coming to the temple without the sin offering. He had, he had every other offering. I guarantee he gave the free will offering. He gave his tithe. He gave everything he was supposed to. He just didn't bring the, the sin offering. And you know, if, if the Jews are anything like that, look who, who think he is. Didn't bring the sin offering. No, he didn't need to. Because he was the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. John the Baptist said. And he even paid the taxes. Mm, don't say that. And make it honorable. He fulfilled the law. And made it right. You know the Bible says. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. And the Holy Spirit. Is in you know if I really want to set my heart right. I could do the law. I could do th all things through Christ. Which strengthens me right. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to jump off the bed. But. Listen, if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, I have the ability. Didn't Jesus say, follow me? Didn't Jesus say, I'm your example? And make it honorable. Oh, he did. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Oh, boy, that's their, that's their testimony. They are, listen, the, the, how many times was the temple sacked? And destroyed. At least Nebuchadnezzar kept everything in his vault for Cyrus to bring it back. But where is all the gold and all that was in the temple during Titus time? It's gone. And God has it somewhere. I know he's got the ark in heaven. That won't come back. I know he's got the golden incense in, all, in heaven. They are all of them snared in holes. That's a, that's a trap. You know, you're walking along and you fall in. That's to catch lions and tigers and any other big animal. You dig a hole big enough where if they fall in, they can't get back out. They are hid in prison houses. What's this verse remind you of so far? They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith restore. What's that verse remind you of? When Jesus spoke, it was in Matthew 24, 25. He said, I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you, you took care of me. Uh, you know. And then he said, I was in prison, you didn't visit me. And it, That's what that verse reminds me of right there. That's the Antichrist going after the Jew and taking everything. That's what Adolf Hitler did. You know, Jews in World War II, when they read, but this is people robbed and spoiled. When they took the gold teeth out of the Jew's mouth, took their hair and made pillows. And they are all of them snared in holes. I can imagine that was probably one of the things that the SS troops did to them. Kept them in holes. They are hid in prison houses. I guarantee they were put in prison. They are for a prey. I mean, the things that the Jews did with their... I mean, they made Jewish soap to sell out of the bodies of the Jews. Made money. And none delivered for a, for a spoil. No, not many people have, I don't know, ever tried to... They had to run on their own. I don't know what people, I never, I ne of all the stories I've heard, I haven't, I'm not saying there wasn't, but I haven't heard anybody that tried to help them. You know what America did? It can't happen. That can't be true. You know, realize when America realized it was true, it was too late. She was in her own war. She was distracted from helping the Jews because she was fighting her own war with Germany. Who among you will give ear to this? I will. 
I don't know how many Jews got saved after all of World War II. Who will hearken and hear from the time to come? What's going to happen in the tribulation period? That verse is going to come to me. Moses and Elijah and 144,000 Jews going about preaching the gospel. And what is the command? Who among you will give ear to this? Not all the Jews are going to believe Moses and Elijah. Not all the Jews are going to believe the 144,000. A raiment is going to make it down. Listen, after, G, after, G, after uh, Satan kills most of them, I guarantee there will be some Jews that will take the mark and all that and will do for the money. I guarantee. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who turned them over to Satan? Who turned them over to Adolf Hitler? Did not the Lord? Oh. It's the chastening of Israel for rejecting Jesus Christ, for rejecting the law, for having graven images. You want to talk about a spanking? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned. That's why God done it. They sinned. For they would not walk in his ways. Uh oh. Neither were they obedient unto his law. Uh oh. So they des deserve what they get. Yet God reaches out mercy and grace during the tribulation period. Again, I've already said, Moses and Elijah and 144,000. God sent his son to Jerusalem, into Israel, around 0 AD to 33 AD, around, right around that time. Exactly, I don't know. God's own son, and they rejected him and gave him a cross. And still Jesus sent the eleven out during the book of Acts to try to go get them again. Until they kept whipping Paul and getting Paul in trouble and sending him to jail. And Paul finally said, that's it. I love you guys, but I'm going to the Gentiles. I've had it. Therefore, he has poured out upon him the fury of his anger that is the tribulation that is Titus sacking sacking excuse me not sacking sacking that was Babylon destroying coming into Jerusalem three times and the third time destroying the city that sent Nehemiah in tears the guy comes back to him he goes what's it look like he said the place is just destroyed the wall is just rubble and he goes before the king and he's sad. And the strength of battle. And it has set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not. And it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. There is the blinding and there is the deafening. They don't even they didn't understand why Titus came in and did what they did. They didn't understand why Babylon did what they did. They're not going to understand the tribulation period. And when it comes to the law today, even the past, they don't go to Jerusalem three times a year. They don't bring their, their sin offering. And they still live in the Old Testament. They won't listen to the gospel. They won't listen to the, the New Testament. It's against their thing. So if they're still in the law, if they're still in the Old Testament, why don't they go there three times a year? They're violating the law right now then. The Jewish synagogue I, I passed going to work. It's Sabbath service on Saturday, I think, 6 o'clock. All right, you go home. Go to their houses. Are they cooking meals? That's against the law. That Passover meal, when they have the lamb there, they break a piece off the lamb and put it on the plate. The Bible says not a bone of him shall be broken. Although, I am told that the women... 
before that time, before the the, the Passover and the Feast of Lemon, man, they go through the house, they vacuum, they clean, make sure there's not even one little speck of leaven in the house. And yet their lives are totally against the Bible today. Go to the Gen Jewish synagogue and say, listen, open up your purse or your wallet. Pull out any piece of money out. I don't care if it's a coin or a bill. Pull it out. You're not supposed to have that. And how many do you have in your wallet? Five, six of them? You know, in Jesus' time, they would go to the temple and Jesus turned the tables off. They would exchange the Roman money, which had faces on it, for temple money. Because the temple would not take the face money. And their own money tells them, in God we trust. And you turn it over, and there's a there's a pyramid half built with the all-seeing eye, not of God of the Bible, but small G O D. So now they got another graven image. They got an unclean bird. Some bills have buildings, images of buildings. Go knock on a Jewish person's house. Say hi. How you doing? You, you believe the gospel, Lord Jesus? No, no, no. So you don't believe nothing in the New Testament? No, 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 no. You got a battle been around your roof? No. Violation of the law. The Bible says you're to have a battle been around your house. Around the roof of your house. How about that one? They're violating what we read today. They are violating their law 2015 and they don't have to because they could be under grace. They can eat pork and shrimp and, and crabs and lobster and all that. But they won't. They can't. But they can. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have that. I wonder if they plant gardens with different, you know, if they're just tomato garden. Or do they put other seeds in there? That's a violation. Ask them to turn around and see their tag. Is it 90% cotton? That's a violation of the law. You can't have two diverse... Uh, material in your clothing. You could have fun with a Jew if you really wanted to today. All the violations that, that he is doing and, and then you open up the Isaiah chapter, chapter, chapter 42 and say, listen, you're violating the law. You're angering God. You have a TV set with advertising? Yeah. You ever watch one of those advertisements and say, I really like that. Yeah. Thou shalt not covet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. It's all upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried, arose again the third day, all according to Scripture, which they missed. When you look at the book of Acts, how did Paul deal with the Jews about Jesus? He showed them the Old Testament. He showed them where all the prophecies, he showed them where Jesus is in the Old Testament, as we've done just with this chapter. And those that recognized it believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, that is the one. Those that didn't, you see the Messiah in chapter 42? Wait till we get chapter 53. There are Jews that will look at that. You see the Messiah? I see that as the nation of Israel. They believe Isaiah 53 is them, not Jesus. They're blind. They're deaf. If I ever witness to, if you ever witness one in the street and he does not believe, he does not see, though you show him black and white, he doesn't hear, even though you speak to him what the Bible says, that is an example of one is blind. Yet he saw, he's deaf, yet he heard. That's someone who has rejected what God has said. When Jesus Christ comes back and those remainment of those Jews are in sale of Petra, if those Bibles are still there, and if God has the Holy Spirit read them, there it is. Now, will it be possible some of those Jews will still reject? 
And Christ will leave them be on. Oh, let me burn them up. I don't know. For those that will look up, there, there, there it is. There, 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 Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Yeah, it says that somewhere like over here. And he's angry. Yeah, he's angry. He got a sword out of his mouth. People burn up all around. Him. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah. Wow, that that is the one. And those that believe the word, that's the one that Moses lies, that's the one 144,000 spoke about. That is him. What's it take to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith. Believe what God has said. 